Welcome to another episode of Inside City Hall, the official podcast of the City of Oregon City, where we share all the who's, the why's, and the how's of how your community operates. I am your host, Jared Lyman, communications manager for the city. And today I'm joined by probably one of the busiest people in our community. Uh, Cecily Rose is the director of the Pioneer Community Center. And I'm sure just about everybody who lives in Oregon City is familiar with the center, but I don't think anybody, even people who go to the center, are familiar with everything that goes on there. So we invited Cecily on to kind of share everything that they do, and then we're going to talk about some ways that the community can support everybody and the center. So Cecily, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it because, as I intimated, you've got a gajillion things going on. So I know uh, taking some time out of your schedule is going to be a little bit difficult, but thank you. Yeah, that's okay. It's an honor to be here. I'm very excited to share what we have going on at the Pioneer Center and what we've been up to in this last year and where we're headed. So first off, uh, for, you know, people know Pioneer Community Center. It's kind of in the name, Community Center. Yes. But it really offers so many services, um, so many opportunities for residents of Oregon City. So kind of explain as best as you can some sure. of the, some of these programs and services. Yeah, so I think it's important to say how long we've been here too. The Pioneer Center is actually celebrating 45 years in operation this year and it was really designed to serve seniors and people with disabilities and to help them age in their homes independently and safely for longer. It's nearly impossible, as you mentioned, to cover all of the services that we do. There are hundreds of programs and services that take place you know, within the walls of the Pioneer Community Center and go out into the community each year. But we're most commonly known for our social service programming, our recreational programming, educational programming, and our nutrition programming. And all of those, of course, encompass many different programs and services, but we are a very busy and very active center. We actually see approximately 4,000 visits each month, and that would be people who are participating in-house, and that really doesn't include those that we're reaching outside of our walls as well. And that that looks like, you know, Meals on Wheels, for instance. We have approximately 150 clients that we serve uh, every day of the week, meaning like they're receiving those meals for each day of the week, but we do deliver four days per week. So it's a, it's a wonderful program. It's a wonderful service. And again, that's our, that's our most vital service that we provide. One thing that I, I always know whenever I go over there for a meeting or, or whatever I have to go there for is that um, the place is always busy yes. and there's always people there. And, and probably one of the most well-known, I guess, programs would be the, the lunches that are provided there. Correct. Which I have to say, I have never been there and not had it smell amazing. Yes. So yes. it's just like, oh, I wonder if I can get me a little bit of that. But no, I mean, seriously, it's incredible. Yeah. So explain that program uh, first, because again, that's probably one of the biggest. Yeah, absolutely. So... Two two nutrition programs come out of our center. Of course, we already honed in on Meals on Wheels a little bit, but the one you're speaking of is also including the congregate dining program. And we have multiple people that come Monday through Friday for lunch. Lunch is served at 11 o'clock. And really, this program is designed to help fight off isolation. You know, the older we get, especially if we are single and alone, living alone, we really need those social connections as well. And that's sort of what what birthed senior centers and community centers throughout the nation was what activities can we provide to really fight off that isolation issue. We know that those parallel. If you are an isolated individual, probably your health is failing at a faster rate. So to provide a center where people can come in, build connection, community, friendships, and relationships, you know, that is much more than a meal. But of course, it includes a wonderful and nutritious meal as well. I want to, so after the meal, you had lunch. Now it's like, all right, now let's burn off some of those calories. The community center recently added a new fitness program that honestly is really cool. So kind of uh, share that with people and how they might be able to get involved should they qualify. Yeah, absolutely. So there are multiple recreational programs that hone in on fitness. And a lot of what we focus on for fitness is like better, you know, better balance or things that help us age well. But the thing that you're mentioning and what I'm so excited about is we've recently partnered with Medicare providers that have the benefits of silver sneakers, silver and fit, renew active and active and fit for our fitness room. We have a beautiful fitness room at the center for those that may not know that. Yes. Uh, Multiple treadmills, you know, all sorts of equipment is in there. And that access is no charge for those people that have that Medicare benefit. So it's a wonderful, 
you know, opportunity for those that maybe wouldn't be able to afford a standard gym membership, but they can do that right there at the center before or after lunch, as you mentioned, um, anytime that we're open. But how that works is they they usually will have that benefit on their Medicare insurance information or policy. And ultimately, you know, they just sign up with us and then we get a small reimbursement for that service through those Medicare providers. And so it's a great partnership and benefit. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, again, I, I said it a moment ago, but that that, that workout room has, has really got some fantastic equipment. Um, I, I'd imagine that that has quickly gained some popularity with your uh, customers there, with your clients, I should say. Definitely. It's been a, a slow and steady like increase of membership for sure, because of course, all of those you know carriers didn't start at once. Um, we have recently added Renew Active, and that's a one-pass option. And ultimately what that means is those that have that specific benefit are able to you know go to multiple facilities. So the great thing about that is they can be a, a member at our center for that fitness room, but then also take some classes at the pool for aquatics. And so so it's it's g- gives more versatility. It really allows them to kind of be active in more places in the community as well, not just our location. You mentioned classes, so we're kind of going to dive into that direction a yeah. little bit. Um, forgive the pool pun, um, but one thing I've, I've I've seen a lot of people a, a popular topic to search on our website is different classes that are offered at the Pioneer Community Center. And I think there's somewhere between like twenty and, and two thousand, um, some insane amount of of classes really just kind of running the whole gamut. So what are some of the more popular ones that are offered there? And then maybe some of the ones people may not know about the the hidden gems. Sure. So I, I love that you're bringing this up because we've done a lot of public engagement recently through our Parks Master Plan. And one of the biggest requests I would say within our community is adult fitness. And I'm not sure if people realize how many great opportunities we are already providing. I think there's always room for more, for sure. But I get excited talking about the subject, knowing that it's such a need and a desire in our community. So at our center, we have a variety of classes. We work very diligently to make sure that we have classes that are no charge. We do have some classes that, of course, through partnerships like community, Clackamas Community Education, there is a charge, of course. There's a, a tuition in, included in that. Um, but again, we want that variety. We want to make, make sure that we are being inclusive for our community members. So some of the options would be like a drop-in, you know, a, a free or very limited charge class. Our top class is actually, meaning our highest attended class, is actually our line dancing class. We have that on Mondays and Tuesdays. <laughs> that room is packed. It's 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 not over packed, but it is a full house, and we are so excited to be offering that. Other classes that would be more of that partnership through Clackamas Community Education would be our very large Tai Chi class or yoga class. We also offer a newer stretch and tone class that's been very popular. So again, you know, there's just a wonderful variety of options and classes. We have Latin dance. I don't want to miss anything. Um, but there is, you know, and those are constantly changing too, because as we as we hear a need in the community, if we're getting multiple requests for a certain type of class, we'll definitely try our very best to find an instructor, identify an instructor and start something. So just since There's I've some been here. There's music classes, instrument classes as well, yes, isn't there? Yeah, we have some art classes. There's a ukulele class, watercolor class. So again, a very great variety of class options. Um, that's fantastic. And that's, that's exciting to learn that there's so many options out there and that, you know, the community is kind of coming together to offer those, uh, instructor, um, instruct those classes. Is, is there a way that somebody could pitch a class or whatever, if they, if they, Hey, I have this skill, I teach this. Would it be something your seniors are interested in? Is that something that people can do? Absolutely. We would encourage that. And we encourage that multiple ways. We understand that some people cannot volunteer volunteer their time to do that, but that is a great option. So we do have instructor-led classes that are volunteers. And then we do have, of course, that partnership I mentioned with Clackamas Community Education. So you could become an instructor with them, and then somehow we could connect and find out that we want to add an additional class through them. But there's always, you know, options. Uh, We do have partnership classes as well. So you can be an instructor and sort of rent to space and then just a portion of those proceeds would come back to us so that you could make your living so to speak that way as well there are a variety of ways that you can do so and we try to make it as easy as possible and as accessible as possible to make sure that we can provide different classes and opportunities for our community 
Uh, again, the way the community comes out to support the center is, is really exciting to see, really heartwarming to see. Mm-hmm. Um, one service that I wasn't even aware of until somebody brought it up at a uh, commission meeting, though, was foot care yeah. for seniors, which is something that can be really important considering the the issues that can arise from, from proper foot care. Yes. So kind of go into that a little bit about what that program offers and, and how people are able to benefit. Yeah, again, we really just hone in on a multitude of programs and offerings. So foot care is so important for those that may have diabetes. Um, if, if you're not aware, you know, it's, it's recommended anyway that you actually have a licensed nurse provide that foot care because a tiny little nick of your foot can actually change the whole course of your health. And so we have a licensed nurse that comes into our center. She is fabulous and wonderful in every way. She provides wonderful care. And again, that's just a great partnership that we have. We are able to offer that uh, twice a week, usually, um, depending on the schedule. Um, but she, she manages her own schedule. She fits everybody in that she possibly can. It's at a a low cost. Now, I say that because, again, we're talking about a licensed nurse here. Um, So for $40, you can actually do so um, right at our center. Very convenient, very wonderful. Again, many of the recipients of that program are already at our center. You know, they're having lunch or they're taking a class or something like that. So it's a wonderful program for them as well and just so needed. We're actually hearing more and more from the county level that that's an unmet need, that more and more centers are having a hard time finding those nurses to provide that that important service. And so we're very grateful that we're able to do that, um, you know, on a regular basis. One of the really fun things about the community center is, as I said, there's always something going on. And with with all these classes, with all these services happening, it's also a center for the entire community. And you actually offer it as uh, a venue for events and so correct. forth that people can rent, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful facility. So I really encourage anybody who has not been to the Pioneer Center to come by, take a tour, take a look at what we have to offer. But it's a wonderful rental you know, venue as well. So we have many renters that come in and they're they're utilizing the center for things such as weddings, quinceañeras, celebrations of life, birthday parties, you know, all sorts of things. We, and we, within the center, we also have multiple rental spaces available. So we have people that own businesses and and rent our basement, for instance, for a staff meeting or a training. You know, we also have some smaller rooms upstairs, a classroom, a fireside room. Again, those can be rented for a multitude of things. And they're also just available, you know, for our patrons during the day with the great programming that we have included in our, our daily schedule. So they're utilized often. But I would say sky's the limit on what types of events you could actually have at our center or plan at our center. We also are a wonderful venue for many citywide events. You know, this year we're, we're already planning for a July event that it looks like our volunteer appreciation event. We did that at the Pioneer Center last year. It's just a wonderful and beautiful and welcoming venue and environment that I think we're going to see more and more citywide events happen there as well. Yeah, it's definitely a fantastic venue. So let, let's actually use that as as a segue here. Um, coming up, if you're watching this shortly after we post it, if not, you might have missed it. So apologies. But um, coming up is an event at the Pioneer Center that really revolves the future of the entire park system. Correct. So if you kind of could kind of share what that is and when that is so people can take part. Yeah. So the Parks and Rec Department has been really taking quite some time in this, the, just this beautiful journey of their parks master plan. And what we're coming up upon is the May 6th public engagement for that parks master plan. So this is really an opportunity where the public gets to share their voice, their opinion, kind of see and and hear and just be educated on what that that map has already done. I'd mentioned that earlier. We're finding out through that engagement and through that parks master plan what the needs are, what what the desires are in the community. But some of that is so broad that we'd love to hear more. You know, I had mentioned that adult fitness is one of the things that has been mentioned as, you know, a a need or a necessity in our community. Uh, But, of course, someone who is part of the city and part of, you know, 
on the team for planning those things and and really creating that programming, I'd love to know more. You know, when someone answered that in a survey, what exactly were they talking about? You know, were they talking about something that we do already offer and they'd like to see it change to something a little bit different? Or are they talking about a brand new program that we've never offered before? So we do have some more questions. You know, I think as we look at those great survey results, uh, this is a wonderful time where we can hear more. We can hear more details. We can hear more passion from the community on where they would like us to go for the future. So when is the event happening at the Pioneer yeah. Center? Give us the, the who's and the where's and the why's, those sure. W's. Yes. So again, that is May 6th at the Pioneer Center, and it's going to be from 6 to 8 p.m. And any public is welcome. Fantastic. Um, changing directions a little bit. You mentioned earlier the Meals on Wheels program, which is probably one of the most important, I think, programs that operate out of the Pioneer Center. We're coming off of March and the March for Meals annual fundraiser that the Pioneer Community Center does. Yeah. It's a, a tremendous um, opportunity and raises a lot of funds for this program that's very necessary. But much like the need at food pantries extends beyond the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays where everybody donates, the Meals on Wheels could use help year round. Absolutely. So let, let's kind of talk a little bit about you know how much March uh, the March for uh, Meals fundraiser helps, but what people can do beyond that to keep this program strong throughout the year. Yeah, no, that's a wonderful question and a wonderful topic of something that I'm incredibly passionate about, of course. So March for Meals is a national campaign. We are members of Meals on Wheels America, and it's really a a campaign that they started years and years ago. Essentially, it has two functions. It's, of course, to raise awareness about the program, and with that awareness can come an increase in volunteerism and an increase in donations. So the fundraising piece is the second most important part of that. We had a wonderful response from many businesses and entities here in Oregon City, and we're so grateful for that. There were 30 six donation jars that went out to different businesses. They collected a, um, you know, a large amount of money for us overall through those small donation bins. On those, we, of course, are now a little bit elevated in our ways and technology. We put a QR code on that as well. So to make that as easy as possible for customers as they were, you know, checking out at a store or wherever those happen to be. In addition, we tried something fun and new this year where we had leprechauns that were passed around. And essentially, you could make a donation and pass that to a friend. And so a lot of, again, chamber members and and individuals throughout the city um, participated in that. But it's a a great fundraiser for us. But I think the vital thing for that time of year for us is really bringing awareness. Again, like you mentioned, so many people around the holidays have us on their mind and their heart, and we're so grateful for that. But we are feeding people (laughs) throughout the entire year, of course. We are We are taking care of these needs no matter what time of year it is. And so uh, we did raise about $3,700 in the month of March. And just to give you an example, last year, because of staff transitions and other things that were going on, they weren't able to participate in a March for Meals campaign. And so, um, you know, that's all profit that would have not been there. And we have those numbers to prove that um, if we didn't participate. So again, we're so grateful for that and just the the collaboration that really takes place for these fundraisers. I think something that some people lose sight of, because I think everybody knows, I shouldn't say everybody, most people know what Meals on Wheels is. uh, But who we serve is often forgotten or not really understood. And we are serving the most vulnerable people in our community. And what I mean by that is we are serving seniors and people with disabilities who are sort of hanging on to the ability to live independently. Um, We are trying to help them age safely in their homes for as long as possible. But Most of them will be seniors or people with severe disabilities. And for many of them, we are actually the only human contact or the only meal that they will receive for that entire day. And so, again, we're we're really just focusing on the most vulnerable, those that have the most need in our community. And we're able to meet that need through this wonderful program. Um, So if if somebody wants to, to help out beyond March... Yeah. What are the ways that people can continue to make sure and support the program and make sure that it continues to flourish throughout the year? 
Absolutely. So monetary donations are welcome year round. The beautiful thing about our donation program is that when you donate to Meals on Wheels, it directly goes to cover those costs. Meaning, you know, that's not going to staff costs. That's not going to overhead or indirect cost. It's actually going to food costs and delivery costs for those meals. It's a beautiful thing. I think you can donate to a lot of places and Budget-wise, because you have to, some of that actually gets taken. Um, it's an incredible thing to know that for us, 100% of those Meals on Wheels donations you know, are secured for that program specifically. And I love that about what we do and how we do it. Uh, you can make those monetary donations any time of year. Like I mentioned, you can do those in person. You can do those through the website. Uh, we also love our volunteers. And our volunteers have a significant value that actually can be equated to a monetary amount as well. We had multiple hours of volunteerism that went into last year. And just speaking alone about the Meals on Wheels program, that is the most hours that actually go into service at our center. We have many volunteers in other roles, and they're all of great importance, but we cannot do that Meals on Wheels program without them. Our, our drivers that actually go to the homes are volunteers. We have kitchen volunteers that are helping serve and prepare and pack those meals. So last year, what I can tell you is that the Pioneer Center saved over $106,000 because of those volunteers, meaning that if we were paying someone to do that, um, it would actually be more than like a full-time staff member. So we are so grateful for them. So if somebody wants to volunteer and help out, uh, what is the best way to go about that? Yeah, there's even that we try to make as easy as possible. Uh, we do have a wonderful connection now um, via our website, and that's from our community engagement individual that manages that. So you can go through the website. You can go directly through the Pioneer Center. You can go through the city and do that. Calling either City Hall or the Pioneer Center will get you in those directions. Um, we are kind of encouraging people to actually go through the city because the, we're not the only ones within this city that have volunteer opportunities. And we are finding that Sometimes volunteers, you know, they want to be a part of the Pioneer Center, but they also want to be part of clearing up Ivy or other things within the city. So we love that way. If you know that the Pioneer Center is where you want to be, we encourage you to even just stop by the center. You can learn about those different roles prior to kind of making that commitment as well. We're happy to educate you on what that looks like, uh, walk you through some of those roles. And again, there's a multitude of roles that you could actually be a part of. Uh, there is a background check that's required. In fact, we do two, which is unique to the Pioneer Center alone. That's because we will have you go through um, the city background check, but also the Clackamas County Social Service background check that we're required to have because of our agreement with the county. So um, website, like you said, www.orcity.org. You can yep. just search volunteer and that'll take you right to the page because I cannot remember the URL off the top of my head. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, but the phone number at the Pioneer Center, what's the phone number over yeah, there? 503-657-8287. Fantastic. Cecily, thank you for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Thank you to our viewers and our listeners, however you're consuming the podcast. This has been Inside City Hall, and I'll talk to you next time.